Welcome to Conscious Profits Unfiltered. This is your host, Sebastian Nam. What's up, guys? You know, I really, really enjoyed this interview. You will basically get a solid 101 on certified B corporations. I interviewed field expert Avery Young. She actually studied social innovation and entrepreneurship and has traveled extensively to advise purpose-driven companies and organizations. Avery is the co-founder of Everroot, a social enterprise consultancy based in Santa Barbara, California. She works with business leaders in effort to improve their overall social and environmental performance and supports them through the rigorous B Corp certification process. If you ever wondered what that little B with the circle logo is on packaging, or if you already love what it stands for and wondering what it takes to get it, you're going to love this show. Welcome to the show, Avery. Hey, Sebastian. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I'm really excited to have you. Uh, so Avery and I know each other through Kate Flynn, who is the founder of Sun and Swell Foods, and um, they are a certified B Corp. And I've always been really into certified B Corps, Avery. So like, I'm super into this. I'm really excited about it. I was actually involved with a one for one, kind of like the Tom's one for one model, but it was for soccer balls. It was a company oh, called Bola. That. Yeah, it was a company called Bola from Argentina. And I was involved with getting them going here in the US, but I was not involved with the process of getting them uh, you know, be certified. So, uh, and that was something they already had from before, but I've always been into it. It's something I look for in the labels, but I think a lot of people have no idea what it is. So I'm really excited to, to learn more about it with you today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I like to start, uh, all of my shows by asking my guests, when was their last Oh shit moment? And that could be something as little like very it could be something really dumb like really little or it could be something really major but whatever that means to you it could be good or bad when was that <laughs> so for the company specifically that for you of- in life for the company whatever you want to share <laughs> um well i mean most recently i i went surfing yesterday with my husband and i'm still learning um but you know you just got to get out there and try it so there was a moment where um I was looking back at um, him and not at the waves and a huge wave just came and completely pummeled me. Um, and then also later, you know, I hit the rocks and it's, just, it's a learning experience, but I'm having a great time with it. So that I was just love that. <laughs> I love that. I was surfing yesterday, but here in Santa Monica, the waves were really small, so I didn't get pummeled, but it does happen to me often. And it's funny, you know, it's weird. Like, I know this is probably really cheesy, but when I'm surfing, I'm constantly trying to like equate like situations in my surfing experience to life because you're literally when you get crushed and the worst part when you're getting crushed is that you come up for air and then you see another wave coming you're like oh shit man another one's coming and i'm not gonna breathe for a long time again yeah oh man it's like this big washing machine effect you get but in real life (laughs) right all right and then so follow that what was your last hell yeah moment and it could have been that next wave you rode or it could be something else yeah um let's see I think, well, you know, I'm just enjoying being in Santa Barbara on the weekends and whatnot. And um, we, (laughs) I went biking around Santa Barbara this weekend and it's been just so cool to see, you know, as everything's opening back up after COVID, um, just to see so many people walking around still in masks and whatnot, but we're just biking around and enjoying Santa Barbara opening up, um, seeing people dining out on the street. So um, it was just a really cool and inspiring thing to be biking around our city and see people just loving and enjoying um, where we're at, despite, you know, everything going on right now. Yeah. I mean, I love Santa Barbara. As you know, I went to UC Santa Barbara. So and, you know, add that in with the it's like a different energy you feel now when you see people. Um, you know, it's funny, too, when I was going out, one of the few things I was doing going out of my house during the midst of all of it was going on on a run. And in kind of the middle, when you would barely see anyone out there, it's funny, if you would kind of cross someone's path, it was almost like everybody was saying hi. Like, it was like, hi, you're a human, I'm human, we say hello. And like, <laughs> it's something that people don't usually do. And it's just funny. So it's like, I feel, I hope that it brings out this kind of energy of more connectedness and more oneness, even though there's still the social distancing aspect yeah, of it. But it's really so. cool that you shared. Yeah. So you did your thesis in social entrepreneurship. Did you, was that your major as well too? So my, yeah, my major at Westmont was in social innovation and entrepreneurship. So that's really interesting. I don't think that was a thing when I went to college. I'm not sure. And 
I, tell us a little bit more about it because somebody's like, what does that even mean? It's like social work. What is this woo woo stuff? But there's also the word entrepreneurship. What, what exactly is social entrepreneurship? What did you say exactly? It was social. Social innovation and entrepreneurship. Innovation and entrepreneurship. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, tell me about it. Yeah. So, I mean, essentially how I would just explain it is that it's really learning how to use business as a tool to solve both social and environmental problems. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my coursework was, you know, some of it was traditional business classes, but some of it was more like social research methods and looking at food systems um, and seeing just how those interact together and how you can use business models to really make an impact um, on our communities and on the environment. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really, really cool. I love that. And so you had, I mean, I'm assuming the first couple of years to get that, a lot of that regular kind of undergrad stuff we all get. So you got a little bit of everything. And then the last couple, the last few years, you focus more on that. So does that separate it out into, and in, you talked about the environment. So are there classes that are more focused on the environment? And then there's other classes that are more focused on the social aspect? Or yeah, but there's some differentiation, but um, most of the coursework that I took really integrated both because you can't really divide the two. Mm. Um, they're so interlinked to where whatever you're doing to um, the planet, it's going to inevitably impact the people that are working on it. You know, so a lot of my coursework did integrate the two. That's really interesting that you say that because I'm thinking to me, I'm thinking, well, no, I mean, somebody that only cares about the oceans doesn't necessarily care about homelessness yeah. and vice versa. Right. Definitely. So um, that's interesting. I mean, yes, in the end, it's all connected. Right. Um, and for me too, it was really interesting because I jumped into the space more with a passion for the social side, um, you know, looking at supply chains with forced labor in them. And there's just a lot of injustices that we mm. see um, socially. And I came in with a lot of passion for that. Um, but then through studies and whatnot, I grew to have a lot more of a passion for the environmental side. So Interesting. Was there one particular issue that always was inside of you that made you want to go into this and and really that instilled that passion in you? Yeah, I don't know if I would say it was one in particular, um, but forced labor was definitely one of them. Um, mm. When I was back in high school, I did, you mentioned my senior thesis on ethical trade in the global food industry. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I realized, wow, in a lot of um, products that we purchase and food that we buy, you don't necessarily know where it's coming from. Yeah. And um, like right now, I think the International Labor Organization estimates that there's like 16 million um, forced labor slaves in the private sector um, in general. So th that was probably from a few years back, but wow, that, that's a huge issue. And companies don't talk about it a ton. No. Um, so that's where I got more into um, What's an example of that? Give me like a tangible example of that forced labor in, in a company that maybe you, you don't have to say the company, but what's, or maybe you can, but what's an example of that? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's a ton of examples. A lot of times it's in the agricultural industry. Mm. You'll see, um, for example, children being bribed to um, work and then they'll end up, you know, bribed by little things like bikes or, um, Wow. Not and then end up joining a company and working for them and then getting trafficked um, to another country and having to um, work endlessly and <laughs> not be able to get wow. out of it. So, um, that was research that I did a, a long time ago and kind of fueled a, a passion there. Yeah. It's really sad. The only, the, the most obvious major example I can think of that is everything that happened with. FIFA and the, the, you know, the building of the stadiums of the World Cup for that next World Cup. I don't know if you're aware of all that stuff, yeah. but um, that's crazy. Um, and then, so you moved to Austin, Texas, and you did some market research in terms of like you kind of started looking into this whole, you know, certified B Corp, certified B companies, B certified. What, what is the technical term for, for, the, for B certified? Yeah. So um, essentially what happened was um to becky aslan is my co-founder um and we realized that you know there's um upon graduating we kind of had this decision of do we want to start another social enterprise or do we want to work with companies to help them improve 
their social and environmental performance. And mm-hmm. we moved to Austin, Texas, um, which is where I'm from originally. We moved mm-hmm. back there for three months um, and kind of did market research, like you said. So we <laughs> walked around and talked to different food trucks um, and asking them, what are you doing in regards to your sustainability and your social responsibility? And do you want to improve? And huh. most of the time, they looked us at us and said, yeah, we really do care, but we don't know where to start or we don't have the time to invest in it. We don't have employees to invest in it. So we're working on it, but haven't really prioritized it. And from there we realized, okay, so there's a lot of traditional companies that want to be doing better, but don't necessarily have the resources to do that. Um, And then there's a lot of leading companies that we're really inspired by. Um, How can we bridge this gap and what's this disconnect? Um, So that summer we worked on launching a social enterprise consultancy um, to where we could work with these companies to help them improve. And then when we moved back to Santa Barbara um, about three months later, that's when we realized that B Corp would be a really incredible tool to work with companies to help them improve Mm -hmm. um, because it's this outside certification that looks at them really holistically. And if a company already wants it, then it's just a matter of us partnering with them and working through that certification to improve overall. That's really awesome. I was going to ask you what market research even means when you're doing it kind of on your own, because it's like, I think of market research, like, Oh, we got to do some market research that, it's like, oh, I got to hire an agency and pay them at least 10K or even $50,000 to do some market research. Or you walk around the streets and you hit up food trucks and you hit up businesses and you just sit, straight up ask them. So I love that that was your market research. And that's the best that a lot of us can do. And you can get started and do your market research that way. Yeah. And that's really cool that you said that like most of them were like, oh, I don't even know how to do that. But yeah, that sounds great. I do want to do that. I, I do want to affect Uh, my communities. And I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of small, medium sized businesses do, but they don't really know how, or, you know, it doesn't, it's not part of the bottom line. So it's not like, you know, within their consciousness of how should we do it, you know? Um, And so you said that essentially, so you started Everroot Consulting. And so Everroot essentially is going to after companies that already know they want to do that. And so you help them through um, that process. And before we get into that process, so what did it mean to you to um, to help these other companies attain it? Like what? why was it so personal for you guys? Obviously you've always cared about this aspect. You were going between the, the option of, should we start a social enterprise or should we help other companies do it? Why did you go that route? Yeah, I personally think that there's a huge potential for large scale impact in that way. You know, of course, you know, starting a social enterprise and you see so many businesses doing really good work and making an impact. Um, But our ultimate vision is, you know, we're starting, we started working with smaller companies and they're making little decisions in their company, like let's pay our employees more or let's start composting and recycling. Let's start Mm -hmm. doing things. But as you start to move and work with larger companies, then you're talking about touching hundreds and thousands of people's lives. Um, so it was just a really cool opportunity to not only, you know, work with existing companies, um, but also like we love working with other purpose driven CEOs and hearing their mission and their values, um, and what they want and helping them make that a reality is such meaningful work. Um, especially when, like I was saying, they don't necessarily have the time or the resources to prioritize it. If we can work with them, um, and help those things become a reality, then um, we're really satisfied with. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, you're scaling that social aspect in a way by helping multiple companies and reaching more people. So that's really cool. So what are those basics of getting the certification? Yeah. So B Corp um, is a certification for companies similar to fair trade or organic, but it's a little bit more holistic in the sense that it, that a company cares about its workers and the environment and the community, not just one of those things. So it does a really good job of differentiating purpose-driven business leaders. And um, when I talk about it being holistic, that means it, it assesses companies in five different categories. So when a company wants to get B Corp certified, the first thing that they have to do is take the B Corp assessment. Um, and that's an assessment developed by B Lab which is the non 
profit that started B Corp. Um, and this assessment goes through those five categories. So it looks at a company's workers, um, how they're treating them, what is their financial security, health and wellness, um, are they satisfied? It looks at environment. So um, what are you, how are you contributing to um, an envir positive environmental impact? Um, what is your impact on land and life um, and climate? And it looks at your governance. So what's your mission? What's your transparency? Um, how are you communicating those things um, and your overall ethics? Then community. <laughs> um, so that's looking at, um, are you giving back to your local community? How are you engaging your community? Is your business meant to um, improve the life of the people around you? And then the last one is customers. So that's looking at, are your customers satisfied? Are you building a product or a service that's going to benefit them in the long run? So there's this really, really holistic assessment that you yeah. go through. It's not just um, asking um, in one aspect of your model, what are you doing well? Yeah. It's really looking at it um, across your entire business model and making sure that you're caring for your workers and for the community and all these things. So a company takes that assessment and they have to get a score of 80 out of about 200 points. Um, so it's like a possible points. It's not like you're getting an F on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, which is cool because it enables companies, you know, to focus on certain categories of the assessment more right. than others. Um, but they still are really forced to think about every aspect of their model. That's and great. once they go through this and they get the 80, then they submit their documentation um, and they have to get that reviewed by B Lab um, and change, make other a few legal changes, um, and then they can finally get certified. So it's a pretty <laughs> rigorous process, um, but it really does help companies improve um, overall. That's awesome. It sounds really complete. Hey guys, I just want to remind you, if you want to find more content like this, you can visit SebastianNaum.com. That's Sebastian, N-A-U-M.com. You can also get a ton of other marketing resources for myself and my agencies, ranging from SEO to social media, influencer marketing, branding, web development, and more. Again, that's SebastianNaum.com. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. I think when a lot of people think of certifications too, they may think like, oh, like, some people just think that there's some BS behind some of them or like there's uh, a lot of bureaucracy that, you know, and it sounds like this is it's not necessarily the case. It sounds very much like very holistic and also very much kind of, you know, I don't know, real to me. I mean, that's how it, that's how it sounds to me. Yeah. And it sounds like a very honest process. Could we say that? Could you say that? Definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. What are. What are challenges, for example, in obtaining it? I, let's say I've got a company and I've got a couple of great give back, you know, things or good things that I do. What could be like a challenge or cause a hiccup or delay? What's an example of a hiccup or a challenge? Yeah, definitely. So say you're a company and you're doing things really well environmentally. You're carbon neutral. Um, you're almost zero waste, perhaps. You're... Um, really minimizing your energy energy and water usage, um, but you haven't really considered um, your workers in the sense of what are their benefits? Are they satisfied? Are you giving mm -hmm. them career opportunities um, and development opportunities? And, you know, a company that thinks we're doing things really well um, may, and they haven't considered these things, <laughs> they're going to run into a lot of problems in the assessment because it is holistic and you, you have to be considering those. So even if, like you said, it's a give back model, um, yeah. and giving a ton away to their local community, but they haven't considered another aspect of the assessment, it's going to be a major challenge for them. Um, and then the other big one is B-Lab cares a lot about documentation um, and formalization. So if you're doing all of these things, um, but you haven't actually developed an environmental management policy or a supplier code of conduct, um, something along those lines, you're probably not going to get credit on the assessment. Um, and the reason that is, is because B-Lab wants to make sure that you're doing these things in the long run. And it's not just, um, oh, today we feel like doing this, um, but in a few months, it's not going to make sense for us. So they want you to have things formalized and properly communicated to your employees so that it can exist 
um, throughout the longevity of your business, which is really cool when you think about it, but it can be frustrating yeah. for business owners when they're like, well, we're doing these things already. Why don't you give us credit for it? Yeah. Um, so they have to spend a lot of time on formalizing. Interesting. I think that that also helps though with the, um, like the connection between the employees and the team members and the founders and the CEOs, not just the process itself, not just the consumers, but kind of what it creates for the people within that company. It's as if they're, they've got a bigger purpose and mission, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, b being a founder of marketing agencies, I get to market a lot of different products, a lot of different companies. And, you know, I've got companies of products that it's just bottom line, just money. This is what we do. We're just trying to sell. Give me the results. Um, and then you've got the whole, you know, other side of that, which is, you know, companies like the ones that you work with. And I see such a different type of consumer and connection between the, the consumer and the company. Um, how do you see this really affecting the either the six, you know, the success or affecting the type of people that, uh, you know, a certified B Corp attracts? Yeah, definitely. So for the consumer in particular, I think, you know, this is one of the main reasons that companies do decide to get B Corp certified is because of the marketing benefits. They know mm. that if they have that logo on their product and um, if it's a, say, a consumer packaged good and it's in a grocery store, if they have that logo on their product, when a customer walks by and they see it, they know that they can trust that company, mm. know that they're not cutting corners and that they really have assessed their company holistically. So it builds brand trust. And yeah. I know Ben and Jerry's a, a popular B Corp. Um, they did research a few years back that showed that consumers were actually two and a half times more likely to purchase from companies that were purpose driven. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> um, Big. And they're more loyal to those companies. So not only is it they're more likely to purchase from them, but they're also going to stick around. Um, yeah. And then in that same vein, thinking about, you know, attracting employees and their satisfaction, um, there was research done. Um, well, B Lab, they, <laughs> they looked at employees who work at B Corps and found that they, they were 98% um, satisfied and happy say that they're highly satisfied with where 98 is a huge wow. number um, yeah so they want that they want their companies or their employees to be satisfied and engaged and part of it is what you're talking about that they have that meaning they have that purpose yeah. in the work that they're showing up to every day so this was a study that was done on like just random certified b corps yeah so this was administered by b lab um seeing across all of the b corps um, what yeah. percentage of employees were satisfied. That's so cool. That's yeah. awesome. It's just all around. I mean, it's just, it just helps everything. That's really cool. So there's a lot of, you mentioned like, you know, uh, consumer package, good products. You got the certified B Corp logo on there. There's so many logos, right? You got 1% for the planet, certified organic, certified B, vegan, non-GMO. I mean, there's so many icons you can have on a packaging now, right? And um, I mean, I, you know, obviously we live in health conscious uh, communities that are more maybe on the liberal side. We have consumers that are looking for these types of icons and things like that. How do you feel that, you know, obviously maybe you're a little bit, you know, jaded, but how do you feel that certified B Corp icon, you know, um, compares to the other ones? Do you think that people see it as important as the others, maybe less, maybe more. Obviously, I'm not going to compare it like with vegan. Vegan has nothing to do with the, you know, social aspect. But yeah, in general, you got all these like labels you can ha have on, on packages now. No, so. And that's a great question. There's, um, you know, I think it depends a lot on the company and what type of product or service you're offering. Um, but generally knowing that B Corp, you know, like I'm talking about, it's this holistic certification for any type of company across any industry. Um, which is, you know, it's it's really cool to see it as this kind of uniting certification. But um, for mm. a lot of companies, like more agricultural focused companies, um, they might want to start with organic or start with fair trade because that's something yeah. they really care about and then add on the B Corp certification. Um, Does that like help? Working, yeah. Sorry so, to interrupt you. Does, does that help? So th those are the things coming in first. Does it help the process of the certification? It does actually. Um, so you'll get more credit on the assessment typically if you've already gone through other rigorous certifications, um, which makes a lot Got of sense. But, like we're working with a blueberry farm uh, right now in Chile and they were already uh, organic and 
uh, fair trade certified. And then they said, we want to we want to go through the B Corp certification process, too, um, because it's a great way to communicate that we're we're caring about all these different aspects of our organization. Um, and, you know, they want to join this greater movement of purpose driven businesses. They want to be networking with um, like minded businesses, you know, so there's a lot of extra benefits that drew them to get the certification. That's amazing. I love it. I, I mean, this conversation could be more the title of this podcast, Conscious Profits. <laughs> That's super cheesy to say, but it's so true. I mean, this is conscious profits at its finest, you know, and it's so holistic. That's great. Yeah. How serious is the follow up process? Um, so now I've got my certification. How like how do I know that these companies that have this logo on their packaging are still doing what they're doing? Is it once a year? How are they checking? How rigorous is that? Yeah. Um, so once the company gets B Corp certified, um, of course, they need to continue to follow up on all of these commitments that they made. And we really prioritize that when we're working with companies. We want to make sure that, you know, they're not just saying that they're doing something, but they've really worked to integrate it into their yeah. company. Um, so once you get certified, you know, it's a matter of continuing to engage your employees. The more you get your employees on board, the more they're excited to continue to monitor and track um, things like key performance indicators so that over time you can really assess and continue to improve. And that's that's the cool thing too about B Corp is they assess you every three years um, and you're gonna have to go through, um, it's a less rigorous certification process the second time yeah. you have to essentially recertify. And it's kind of cool to right. see competition within the, the group of B Corps um, that they wanna continue to um, improve their score and get better um, for the next time around. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Oh, you gave me an example of the blueberry farm. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to think of certified B Corps, usually also like CPGs, products, consumables, and things like that. Are there also, do you have any examples of maybe service space that you've particularly worked with or just that you know of? Yeah. That are not products? Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, so right now we're working with an impact focused financial firm um, mm. that's actually based in Santa Barbara. Um, so they're really excited to go through the certification process. It makes a ton of sense for them. Um, and then earlier on, we worked with a marketing agency. Um, so yeah, it's, it's. So what would that mean? So how, how, as a marketing agency, what, what would it mean for me outside of, so I'm treating, how I'm treating my employees would be one of them, right? So yeah. what other things would be the brands that I bring on and I work with, for example? Definitely. So, and of course there's different ways that you can improve. Um, but questions that I would ask a company, okay, how many employees do you have? How many um, offices do you have? Um, and think about what are the benefits that you're giving to those employees? Are they, um, are you investing in their career development? Um, it, we might ask questions like in your actual office space, um, how can you be better stewards of your work? Um, and then thinking about your clients and your customers, you know, are you um, getting feedback from them and integrating it into hmm. your business going forward? You know, I think it's really easy when you're a service based business to give your service to someone um, and then move on and assume that you did a good job. But B huh. Corp are continuously asked to assess um, and ask their clients how did I do? Um, what could I improve on? And what will make me do a better job with my next client? And then things like community. Are you giving back to your local community? You know, there's a few different options for B Corps. Um, they can give back a percentage of their top line revenue, or they can um, volunteer more or do pro bono time. Um, there's a lot of different options for how they can engage with their community, but there's there's so many ways, and it's it's really exciting to see companies go through this process and just really challenge themselves in areas that they haven't looked before. That's amazing. I love that. So you come across a lot of conscious leaders and CEOs and founders and entrepreneurs. What are one or two traits that you think are key? And that, you know, in, in today's new conscious leader. Yeah, definitely. Um, a few things, you know, it's it's so inspiring working with the founders and the owners of companies. Um, and what I've really seen is this kind of unwavering dedication to their values and to their mission. And 
one of my favorite things is to sit down with a client, you know, we'll create an improvement plan for them and say, here's how you can get to um, 80 points or above 80 points to get B Corp certified. Um, these are different things that you can do. And, you know, I'm sitting through and I'm talking through all these options and it's so encouraging to hear them say, oh, yes, of, of course we want to do that. We've been hoping to do that forever, but we just haven't, you know, yeah. and it's little things where they're like, well, of, of course we want to reduce our emissions or of course we want to provide um, English lessons to our um, employees who aren't fluent. And of course we want to, you know, and I yeah. just see this excitement and an eagerness to do better um, and to constantly improve and give back and make a difference. Um, and I, I think it's an incredible trait that it is most, if not all of our clients have definitely had. And I feel that all leaders should have. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So anyone listening to this that wants to get, you know, certified, uh, wants to get the certified B Corp certification. I see, I am still saying certified B Corp yeah. company certification. So, um, they clearly need to talk to you about this. So how can they get a hold of you? How can they find you or ever root on social or on your website? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, they can email us at Everroot Consulting or hello at everrootconsulting.com um, and connect with us. We'll jump on a phone call um, or visit our website. Um, but yeah, we we love working with all types of companies and businesses who want to improve. And as long as they have that eagerness, then we believe they can join the community and um, would love to get in touch. So if they just have questions about B Corp, the process, um, their legal requirements, anything like that too. We're just, we're here to answer questions um, and be that resource and guide for them. I love that. Well, I'm sure you'll continue to keep getting questions from me at least. So, and I wish you all the best to continue to scale all this good that you guys are helping do. So thank you so much for being on Avery. Really, really appreciate it. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. You know, it takes a lot to put these things together, but I truly love doing it. If you enjoyed this episode or the show in general and you listen to it on audio podcast, please take some time to give it a review. It would really mean a lot to me. And if you watch the video, please go ahead and just click subscribe and share it with somebody that you think would like it. It would really mean the world to me and it helps keep the show alive. Visit SebastianNom.com for more content and follow me on Instagram at SebNom. That's S-E-B-N-A-U-M. Thanks again for spending your time with me. I know it is valuable. I hope you have a great rest of the day and week. Till next time.